Welcome to Legend of the Stoned Owl, we like to call it Lotso. My name is Chris. I'm Justin. And I'm Alan. Okay, so tonight's episode, interestingly enough, is being filmed on Friday the 13th here in Washington. And it is, a, well, I mean, everywhere in the world it's Friday the 13th. <laughs> but the part that's Washington specific is the freaking heat wave we are having. It is crazy. So we thought we'd have a heated up rant segment on tonight's Lotso. We're all fired up with the heat, so we're going to be uh, getting into some of our gaming rants here in a little bit. Uh, before we get into that, though, we're going to talk about the preview of we're going to we're going to preview the upcoming game releases. Um, we've kind of been kicking around some of the games that we're most looking forward to, and the ones we think we're going to commit to buying, and then talk about right here on the show. And uh, we're going to be covering that in the next segment. All right, guys. With all that said, let's get into the 2010 quarter four roundup. Now that excellent music means it's time for the preview. What's coming up first in 2010, gentlemen? Well, I'll tell you right now. Coming out on 914, Halo Reach. This has got to be... Now, this is funny, right? Because I actually was originally not all that excited about this. What about you guys? Uh, I'd kind of... I've played through all the Halos. Well, not through all the stories. Ha ha! And uh, just played a lot of them. A lot of the multiplayer and everything. And I'd kind of been fed up after the third one. Justin and I played it through the co-op, and it was fun. It was, it was fun, but it was a lot of backtracking. It for for a co-op game, it was it was a lot of fun. But for what I expected from Halo, oh, I was the meta game and stuff. The meta game was cool. The meta game was about awesome. That. Mm. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Well, as I've been kind of like. Um, not really had like a good first person shooter in a while. I don't know. I've kind of been looking for a good first person shooter again. And so I've been coming more and more excited about Halo. And uh, I think it's going to be the first game I'll pick up of, uh, of like, the next quarter of games. Are you guys going to grab this one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I gotta, I'm going to pick up ODST before. I want to try that. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. And then, uh, and then I think, uh, well, well, of course, if we're going to all three, all three of us are going to grab it, we'll definitely have a pretty good discussion about it on lots of, so that'll be cool. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, I haven't heard anything about their co-op or anything, but th you know they're going to do it right. Yeah, yeah, they've been always pretty good about that, haven't they? I mean, uh, at least in the last one, uh, I played. I, I remember. I, I remember the one of the very first things really about Halo was that it was so core, co so core based around multiplayer. Yeah, like you even on the original Xbox, the first one. See, that's funny because I never played any of it multiplayer. Oh, it's so much fun, until dude! Until the third one. Oh. Well, the cool th cool thing about this is that there's actually different people now. It's not just uh, you know. Like I like Master, Master Chief, Chief and Master Chief Two. So when were you Master Chief Two? Like when you're doing co-op, you're basically just like a secondary. Oh, okay. But hmm. now this one, it's so maybe that'll be fun. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, now the next game up. Uh, I, this one I don't think is going to be on my buy list, but I think you guys have been enjoying this. So I don't know. Maybe I'll give it a try. Uh, coming out on the 19th of October is DJ Hero Do. Now uh, you guys are big DJ Hero guys, or what? I love it. Um, yeah, this, is, this is a list if you're watching the thing. If you're watching uh, the video version, we've got a massive list of the different artists that are going to yeah, be in the it's, game. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Uh, who I'm not even going to begin to go through it. Um, but if you go to the djhero.com website, you can find it out. But it's just fun, all the mashups and stuff. And as far as the guitar games, I've gotten fed up with like all the guitar heroes and everything like that. Rock Band never did it for me. And uh, word, word. this one's just a lot of fun. It's a music, the mashups. I really love them. And now, is there any word on if your existing peripherals will work with this one? Is that usually something they let you keep doing, or do you have to buy all new stuff for the new one? It usually always works, but sometimes you lose some of the things they implement. Gotcha. All right. Well, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'm on the fence on that one. But both you guys are picking that up. No, uh, probably just me. Oh, okay. Justin likes to come over when we play <laughs> <in> my place. <laughs> now, now this next one. I, yeah, I, I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm going to be jumping into Fallout here. I've been saving it. I'm going to jump right in. I'm a little worried, but Fallout 3 is coming out. No, uh, New Vegas. Or, right, sorry. <laughs> Fallout New Vegas is coming out. Um, also on the 20th of October. Now, this one is going to be awesome. The 26th of October? 19th. The, the 19th, that's when it is. This is going to be the best game to come out hands down all year. It might not get awards or whatever, but it's going to take up my life. Yeah, 
I'm looking forward to this uh, playing in this world. This world looks really cool. Yeah, the cool thing. Tell them about the casinos. Oh, yeah, and the casinos. So, you know, in Grand Theft Auto, you go into different casinos, and it's the same games type of thing. Mm-hmm. And it's everything's the same. But in this one, every casino has different rules that they play by. Okay. There's different... They got different house rules for the card games. There's different rules for everything. Huh. So when you go into a casino, it's not going to be the same exact casino with a different layer of paint on it. It'll actually be different gameplay. Yeah, there's different things that happen. If you do too good, they'll kick you out. You know, really? They, yeah, if you take too much money, they'll boot you out. They'll have security escort you. It hmm. just uh, the Fallout 3 was awesome, and this one just seems to be building upon what they did and making it even better and just in the scene and everything, the kind of Las Vegas style, obviously, it just it it's gonna be awesome. What's cool about this one too is that this one's not necessarily there was no ground zero in Vegas, so a lot of it's still intact. Oh, okay. It's actually like you know fallout from uh, the so so people have actually kind of have come from all around to get here because it's still in some sort of reasonable condition. I'm not quite sure about that. They don't have to talk too much oh, okay. about the story, but it's. Uh, that sounds like that's a possibility. I mean, it sounds like it could be a lot more populated because of that. Yeah, it does. Because the last game was really, really drab. You know, there was no color to the world at all, but I didn't mind it. But all the neon lights and all this stuff happening, I'm I'm pumped. All right, I'm looking forward to it. It will be my first Fallout game just because I've done that thing that I do a lot of times with, uh, with movies or TV series is I haven't watched any of it yet because I, I don't want to spoil it. So I've been saving it, but I just can't resist it. I think I'm going to jump in with this one. I'm going to give it a try. I know I won't be able to devote the time that I should to it, but I'm going to try to give it a, at least some play. This oh. game will take over Star Trek for you. <laughs> you think so? I think this game has the power to do it. It's deep. Wow. There's in the last game, you go running into the Museum of Natural, or you know, the Museum of History. We should say he means by Star Trek, he means Star Trek Online. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He currently, well, no, it'll ruin time. everything Star Trek for you. You, you won't <laughs> care about it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you go running so. into the the Museum of History, and you go find Abraham Lincoln's repeater. What? So you actually find these crazy, unique guns. There's only one of them in the whole level or the whole game. And you get this awesome rifle, and it's actually Lincoln's gun. They get you actually get to wear Lincoln's hat and stuff. That's gonna be cool. Yeah, they they do. Just there's so much gameplay in it. There's every time you run to do something, there's something else to do, another side quest, another person to help out, another storyline. I've gone through two one hundred hour game sessions Whoa, of this thing. Oh, buddy. I put 200 hours into two different games that I tried to play because I went through Evil. And did it feel repetitive when you played it both times? I mean, the second time through, was it repetitive? No, I did everything twice. I found all the bobbleheads. I went and I found all my weapons, all my armor, everything that I had in my last game. I did the same exact thing. Huh. That's pretty cool. All right, well, so next up on the list here is uh, Fable 3. Right? Yes. Now, tell me, guys, really... If I haven't played Fable 1 and 2, am I going to be screwed if I jump in at this point? Uh, it kind of tails off from Fable 2. It's what you do when you get into power type of thing. So as long as you understand that, you're not going to miss too much. It, okay. It, you know, there's little things you're going to miss. But it'll be a good game to start with. I'll probably. Do you think after I play this, you think I'm going to want to go pick up the first one and the second one? No, definitely not the second one. Really? No, nah, the second one was was different. It wasn't as good as all these ones. Or it wasn't as good as the first one. What about you, Alan? Are you looking forward to this game? I don't know. Uh, the first one I was really excited for, didn't really play. The second one, same thing. And this one, they say it's going to be different, and it has been, you know. I just, to me, it doesn't quite look like my type of game. It looks a little too fantasy for me. Which I can definitely dig from time to time. It's, it's different, it's, but it's got that kind of... It's got weird humor in it, and it's just a weird game. Yeah, it's it's definitely fun to play. I mean, I liked the time I spent with Fable 2. It's just I didn't... I don't know. It just didn't bring me back. Whenever I sat down to play games, I never really... It was like, oh, I said it. Let's, let's really crack into Fable 2. Hmm. So, I don't know. I'm kind of iffy on this game. I might might borrow Justin's once he's done with it. I think I'm going to maybe hold off and see, see how it's looking on this one. I would definitely hold off on it if I were you guys. But you're going to make the jump? Probably. All right. 
All right. Well, that's you know, if if you are now, were you jaded by Fable Two or did you enjoy Fable Two? Me? Yeah. Fable Two? Uh, yeah, I liked it. Okay, but it so just, that's that's why you're a little more inclined to buy this one up front. Yeah, I like what I liked about uh, you know the first one was great was is that they just it was the first time you ever did it and. You know, it was cool because when the first one, you carried around a big sword and you couldn't even swing it. <laughs> but the more you use swords, the oh, stronger yeah, and bulkier yeah. you got. That's and you were cool. able to start getting those weapons up that you started doing. I like it when they do that kind and of the stuff. The second one wasn't quite like that. It, it was, was a little more easier. It was a lot easier. Yeah, I hate it when they do that. I hate it when they go that direction to try to appeal but to the bigger town, But the town, the, the world was crazy. But that's what they're saying about the third one, too, isn't it? They're taking out a lot of the RPG elements, so aren't they just simplifying it even more? Oh, that's interesting. Mike768 says, I think it'll be better to play the third one because uh, the f- if you go through the first one and then jump to the second one, you'd be kind of bummed out. He says that uh, he felt that the uh, first one was a lot better than the second one. He's totally, he's basically agreeing with exactly what you're saying, Justin. Mm. That's interesting. Now, okay, so the next game coming out on the list, uh, True Crime, comes out on the 4th of November, right? Now, True Crime... Is this a game? Now, this is a game I'm looking forward to personally. I'm planning to pick it up. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think it just looks like a fun game now. Uh, for me, this type of game is a very good... Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, they got some mean maneuvers. This type of game is a, it's a casual kind of play for me. So I probably won't be getting into it very oh, much. Sacrilege. I dude. know, dude. Um, I know. What about you? So you're really looking forward to it. I really love the first one. I didn't play the second one. I love the taking hostages thing. But I like, uh, it's like Grand Theft Auto with awesome hand-to-hand combat. Yeah. And yeah, the, the, the combat's way amped up. And that's what I think I'm going to like. Because I honestly, and boy, don't don't hit me, but I honestly felt the combat in Grand Theft Auto was clunky for me. It was. Oh, Grand yeah. Th- oh, okay. Definitely, okay. Definitely. I wasn't sure if that was just me being a hater. Every Grand Theft Auto, Not the melee is garbage. Yeah, I've always thought I could use better combat, and I think this is exactly that. And that's what I like. Yeah, see, as long as this is executed properly, it'll be a really fun game. But it, the controls could easily be simple and stupid and horrible. Yeah, they can't be too automatic. That's a requirement. But they also can't be... Um, uh, you don't want to... Depending on how rushed the situation is, you do want some... Like that guy, the, one, the one last shot we just showed, uh, that guy jumped right into a car from being on top. That might be a maneuver. Once you get him in the right position, you might possibly want to automate it by pushing a button. You know, like if you get yeah. in a position, you know, that kind of... So it's a fine line they need to walk. I love... It's another open world. It's in Tokyo, which is kind of cool. Oh, that light. is cool. Yeah, and it's going to be... Now, uh, what? any word on the uh, multiplayer? Not yet. Oh, God. I would love to be able to run around in there with you guys. That would be so cool. That would be great. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, in an open world like that? Oh, I hope they do it. And anybody in the chat room, if you know anything about the multiplayer and, and true crime, let us know. But uh, why don't we move on now to uh, the last game on our list for this year, personally. Because we're not going into 2011, but there are some games like, oh, I don't know, Halo in 2011 that we're looking forward to. But the next one on our list comes out on the 16th of November, and it is Assassin's Creed. The Brotherhood. Now, I don't know. I have not enjoyed, uh, I did not enjoy the last Assassin's Creed. The second one? Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, I, I just got bored. Oh, I really liked it a lot. I've I, so I far the I've concept. liked all these games. Um, the only thing that has me disappointed is that they're sticking with the same character. Hmm. Um, See, I love that. Well, yeah, that would seem like an advantage to me. I don't know. I kind of wish that they'd go. You you're, know, you're getting bored. Back again? No, 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 not not like that. It's oh. just I was kind of, the, since the first game, you know, they switched and jumped so far ahead. I was kind of thinking they were going to jump again. At the same time, this isn't Jeez, Assassin's look at those Creed three. It's just Assassin's a Creed. 2.5. Oh, it yeah, is? Yeah, then really? why isn't yeah. it just a downloadable content? That, because, because it's going to be, be so huge. much better and huge. Yeah. So what makes it what makes it more like Assassin's Creed 2.5? It's the same character in a different... It, the first one you were in, like, what? Just pretty much Italy and... Yeah, in that like, uh, area. Yeah, and this one you're going to be in Rome. And it's oh, the same okay. guy after you, you know, did what you did at the end of the game. You ended up in Rome. Boy, I got to say, whoever rendered the uh, the visuals for their trailer... Ubisoft, dude. The, oh, man. The, the visuals are getting amazing. The trailers for this game have always just made me very excited in my pants. See, I want to start seeing movies like this. If yeah. they start coming out more CG movies like this, I would watch it. I'd watch movies again. Yeah. I, I always wonder when we're going to get to the day when game graphics are just almost so lifelike you can't tell. Oh, the feather. 
Petruccio or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My brother. Now, but you know, Alan, you were just talking about you don't want the game to be too easy to play, but and that's one thing that I think people criticize Assassin's Creed quite a bit for is the, the you know uh, the brainless yeah the pushing the button automation. No, I, I didn't say I don't want it too easy to play. I just kind of wanted a little bit more. But like Justin said, this isn't the third one. This is you know basically an add-on to the second one, two and a half kind of thing. And so that's that's cool as far as that goes. It's just. Uh, and since it came out so quick, that makes sense. It just I guess it gets me even more excited for Assassin's Creed 3. Yeah. I just don't know how far this is going to push the actual story of so is this gonna Desmond, be full price? the character. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. Oh, it's Ubisoft. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing, nothing's cheap, yo. Now, see, that looks cool, the army of assassins. I just hope you don't have to control them. But then they're going to be stupid. And then I, I don't know how that's going to work. So yeah. I'm excited for it, but... And I'm, yeah. I'm going to get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get it. I, I've always liked the games. It'll now, be fun. What's I'm gonna the word like on the it. multiplayer here? There's tons of multiplayer. That's what the one huge co-op? addition is. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily co op, but there's, I think yeah, there's I like co op so. um, missions. Now, uh, we, we uh, wanted to give uh, a mention to uh, DC Universe Online, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, now, that's going to be. Uh, I guess, Alan, you're going to be out on that one because if we're talking consoles, that's a PlayStation one. Yep. Um, and then I think they're going to do a PC release too, right? Aren't they doing a PC of DC? They online? have to. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to DC. On I'm 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 a little skeptical. We talked about it before. You know, I'm a little skeptical of the uh, you only get to play the famous hero during uh, um, you know uh, combat type. The PvP. Yeah, and so. Because then, you know, you don't get to, you you play your main character all day long, and then when you actually go to PvP, then you don't get to play the person you spent all your time on. I don't know how that's going to work. It. I just, uh, you know, they're saying it's it's a action online game, not... Yeah. So I just hope they have good combat combos, not just, uh, not just A-A-A-A, or in the PlayStation's case, X-X-X-X. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, the, the challenge the challenge there could be in uh, in making the combat to access all the different powers either really frickin' obnoxious or uh, really easy. They're gonna have a tendency to do that. See, what's funny too is last time all I saw was the uh, trailer. And yeah, the at graphics the, are a little different here. Yeah, right looking there. at the graphics in the game now, I'm a little less excited. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I am too, actually. Um, I said that, and you said as long as it's in that world that they created, that's like. Well, uh, you know. But then I again, sh- it doesn't even look like that. I should The buildings matter. are all happy. It's all I beautiful shouldn't, outside. I shouldn't hate on just for the graphics. It's just that that trailer was so amazing in visual. See scope. again, like what Justin just said. I want to see that CG movie of the trailer. That's yeah, what you said I when would we were watch watching that Marvel yeah. or that DC movie. That looks kind of cool. Awesome. This th- this looks like this could have some cool potential, especially working together. So, you know, if you could be different heroes, each of each See, it one doesn't of us. look like they're firing off combos. It looks like it's, it just looks like an MMO, and now I'm not excited. <laughs> it does kind of look like an MMO. I know that's what, you know, it's MMO action game, but... We'll know, see. If they could give me an so not, MMO... Are you with, thinking about taking this off your buy list? I'm almost definitely thinking about it now. Whoa, dude. I'd still like to play the beta. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll try it, but I'm not gonna buy it until I know what it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Well, I'm not gonna buy. Did it Did you at happen all. to notice when DC? You, it's like a, it was like a November six or something like that. Sooner than I thought. I was surprised. Yeah, I thought when it I was just the the beta coming. Yeah, that out might next just year. be the beta. That might maybe just be the beta that's coming out then. All right, guys. Well, that's our uh, preview look at the uh, upcoming quarter four for 2010. I guess. You know, I gotta say, it is kind of a stinker, isn't it? I'm not looking forward to. The to um, I don't know. That's a lot of games, dude. We're looking that's at lo- yeah. on that list is what one, two, three. That's six hundred bucks right there. Three hundred bucks. Three hundred so, bucks worth of games. That's not a down year. And you know, uh, yeah, but they're not that. I guess. Well, Fallout is the only game that I'm definitely Fallout, and I'm I'm looking forward to True Crime. Myself. Yeah, me too. Halo. I'm yeah. Halo. Dude, I'm screwed. Halo. True Crime. I gotta wait for the reviews. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, if if the combat's not there, it's gonna suck balls. Yeah. I think the combat's got to be there. You're right, but I'm more than I'm willing to give it a shot. And there's Civ Five coming out. If anybody cares, probably not. No, they're no talking one, about no the one chat plays room. that game. They're talking about it in the chat room quite a bit. Yeah, I know. That's why I said that. <laughs> uh, now you know the thing is, is um, I just felt like 2009 was grander in scope at this at this time. 
Can I just say one thing real quick? Yeah, go ahead, dude. I think Mike768 and I are kindred spirits. Oh, yeah? Mike yeah. Mike 768 in the chat room? Yeah, yeah. We seem to uh, have a lot of similar Lizikes. Well, he me- he mentioned Madden, which I know is your rant. You guys want to... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Over that? Let's Probably jump. time to get into that. All right. Let's jump over to the rant section. All right, boys and girls, we thought, since we just got done gushing about all those video games and how we were going to spend like $300 on the gaming industry, maybe it would now be fair game to uh, have a little rant section on this Friday the 13th. It's a hot day in Washington, and we're all worked up over Madden. Or at least Justin is. Very worked up. It's going Always on. worked up. And we got to say Mike768 in the chat room, also quite worked up. What's got you all hot and bothered? Well, it's had us bothered ever since the... Uh the Xbox 360 generation came out of this game. They took a gigantic step backwards, and they haven't gotten back to what the last generation was. In terms of gameplay or what? I mean, uh, what the what gameplay, they're actually, you know, they're doing better with the gameplay. But my big deal is the uh, the franchise. Is uh, a franchise, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, a franchise, it, Justin. It's when you take a team through 25 years. So you take your team... You draft players. Oh, okay. And you know you just go through Super Bowls and then you end and it's it and you play. So as you play, you go. You essentially are go traveling through time in a way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's fun. It's really fun. It's it's the only thing I've ever really played on these games. And they took that out. But what? Yeah. What have they ruined in the new ones in the new generation? That is. It's they haven't added anything. As I see other sports games. So have these is awesome it just more of the same every time? Yeah, they haven't changed the franchise. They didn't change one thing this year. Ouch. Zero. So is there any graphics updates? Uh, they got this locomotion system this year that they're talking about, and it's better, but... I mean, because to me, it looks incredible. Is this always how it's looked? Yeah, yeah it's always looked good. I've, I've watched a lot of games the over past, at Justin's house. The past three years, it's looked pretty good. <laughs> it's looked fine. And, dude, all these animations you're seeing, like there's celebrations at the end, that's stuff that's been in this game for five years now. Same celebrations. So I've been watching... The same things over and over again, and I retardedly buy this game every year. Are you gonna buy? Oh, it and too? every I year I already bought it. I hear him and Ryan. Why did you buy it, dude? Because it's their EA has the uh, the 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 exclusive but, rights to the NFL, and there is no other football. But game. if it's the same exact game experience as the last one, why not just play the last one? Updated rosters. They uh, that's where they get you. They just all they have to truly do is update that roster. It is. It's all they oh. have to do, and it's. And people love Madden. I love it. I hate it, but I love it. And everything is the same. And they do this every year, too. Every single year. They get the Seahawks uniforms wrong, but then they fix it afterwards. They wear white pants on white jerseys when they're away. It must be the template. Do they, they mess use. up other teams? It must Not be, that I've ever seen. They must seen. have that template for the Seahawks. Well, they always get it right by the time the game's out. You know, it, it, it's... Uh, the franchise is just, I'm going to play it, I'm probably going to get into it about 10 years and get pissed off, but they just took, they made it worse over the years somehow. It's too bad. It really is. I couldn't believe it, and every year I buy it thinking it's, I never hear shit. They never say anything about the franchise, but I'm thinking maybe they're going to change it, because <clears throat> they talk about all this other stuff. They sold you on the fact that wide receivers can stay in bounds better now, and they make smarter catches. Last year, they sold this whole entire game on gang tackles. Is more than one person tackling you at a time. That's a big deal. That was the big deal. That's what they kept on hyping to you about. They kept on saying, "Oh, check out the check out all these gang tackles. Watch everybody on you know jump on one guy." And it's cool because it's realistic and it wasn't there before. But when you're showing me that after a year of work, I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah, that's. So what you're saying is That's because they up. have a monopoly on the rights, as OMG Jeremy in the chat room points out, they can get away with whatever they like. Yeah, the uh, you oh, know the creative competition. Millions. You know that's what they say that drives a lot of games is baseball games, basketball. I guess baseball not anymore because I think okay, yeah, whatever. But basketball games is a good example. Is that they keep on 
making the other company better by putting out a better product than right. their competitor. Right. And these guys just got the... Sh- and that's another thing they changed right there, is the kicking. That was another one of their big things, is we changed the kicking. It's a three-button press instead of the wiggle stick up and down okay. motion. Okay, okay. And they have this uh, they have this game flow thing, which is kind of neat, because you can play a game way faster, and it kind of picks the plays for you. And then you can go into the uh, actual... Um, the game menu and choose the plays you wanted to pick from and rate them like an iTunes song. Oh, interesting. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, it is kind of cool. Huh. Okay, so there's some, uh, that sounds like there's some improvements, but it's super, like, just fluff stuff. It is. They're just trying to cater to everybody instead it's of... It's stuff the- that they could just hire a few outsourced developers for a couple of weeks to come up with. Yeah, I had this great idea. I was talking to Ryan. Um, and I says, Ryan from Northwest Goofballs, the uh, football podcast over at JupiterBroadcasting.com. Football. And, um, I told him I had this great idea. If Madden took two years to come out rather than one year, yeah. they can hit me with a $20. I'd pay $20 for a roster update. Yeah. So they say, here's a $20. Here's a DLC, a roster update. Yeah. And then they actually get two full years to work on the game. They'd probably make more money. Who knows? You know, I, I'm not smart. But that's what I I would I would fall in love with that idea, hmm. my idea. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, now uh, I've got myself a rant. Alan, I know you've got yourself a rant. Do you want to uh, jump into yours? Are sure. you ready? And then we'll as you don't like it. Well, go ahead and give it. We'll see. We'll see what I got. See, uh, what's your rant? The thing for me right now is uh, there's not a lot of things in video games that piss me off that make me mad. You know, little things here and there, but nothing. Sure. Nothing too grand. <gasps> but I have come to hate cool. multiplayer achievements. Um, now, tell me, what do you mean when you say multiplayer achievements? I mean, on my Xbox 360, when I have to do something online with the other people. Yeah, yeah. When I have to do something online with other people to get the achievements. Because, to me, unless it is a specific like online game. Like, uh-huh. if it is like the Call of Duty or whatever. Okay, okay. Like, yeah, I get that. And Call of Duty doesn't do any multiplayer achievements. Which was... Funny this time around. Yeah, go for it. They figure. didn't do it last but year. Like, either. Uh, for example, like if you're watching the the video, there is this one in Grand Theft Auto that is next to impossible. We tried it, I don't know, at least a weekend. So, what you're complaining about is that you can't have 100% completion on the game unless you do multiplayer with other people. Right. And so it's like, well, so I can't find someone else to do it with me. Like, Justin and I could always do it, but you need at least three people, you know, to really be able to accomplish it i think that's fair i mean and we can't do it and then you know and i'm sure other people that don't have internet connections or don't pay for the live but still want that achievement still want you know i hundred i did a hundred percent of the game i completed it 100 percent, but i don't get 100 percent of the achievements no i've totally followed that i'm such a multiplayer fan that i really like the idea that i like i like when you drive a reason to have to play multiplayer but i guess i don't i guess i don't if you're buying a game that's primarily a story driven game then you're right. I don't think you should have to have um, a multiplayer uh, achievement in order to have completion. I mean, before the pre-show, I was like, "Oh, come on, you're stupid, Alan." But if it's a game where, if it's a game where it's a single-player player storyline for the most part, with a, with a little bit of multiplayer worked into it, then I think that's a little ridiculous when they do that. The other time <laughs> I hate it is uh, the good example I have is on uh, Gears of War, especially the first one. Um, there was a lot of achievement hunters. Like uh, they would just, oh. hmm. They would they would just find the achievements that they wanted, and then they just go and play for that. And so you know you get these guys just kind of not playing the game the way it was meant to be played, and that just kills it for me. I it pisses me off. I hear you. So all right, yeah. Not that's... not not a bad rant, Cersei. And you thought I'd hate all over it. We did it earlier. Well, I did, but then I, <laughs> I decided to consider. Now, I wanted to, co- I wanted to complain about Google. What you'd say? Why Google, Chris? Well, you see, guys, I Chris think Chris loves Google. I think Google, in association with Microsoft and Apple, but I think Google's about to make a really huge play, are going to really uh, uh, erode the marketplace for big title developers to make big epic scope games so take a uh, take example here's an example of atari atari made something like 14 million dollars last quarter but they are 26 million dollars in the hole <laughs> <laughs> so they can make for 1 million dollars they can make a casual game that can make them 15 million dollars if they make the right casual game just like right. if they make the right big box game so google 
So speaking of casual games, so I'm just saying there's the financial incentive in a recession. There's a big financial <coughs> recession because it's a lot cheaper to make these casual games. A lot faster, too. A lot less risk, too. So Google's coming along. They just bought one of these companies that's responsible for the online gaming things like Farmville and stuff like that, the, the networking aspect of it. They do a lot of types of that kind of stuff. And I think Google's going to make a big push to integrate gaming into the new Android 3.0 phones that will be coming out late this year, early next year. They're going to be like marketed as like 3DSs that are phones. Well, it's about time. The games on my Android, on my Droid suck. I hate it. You don't get any good games. I mean, even though it is casual, you know, like Plants vs. Zombies. I want to play the hell out of it. Justin, you love it. Love it. But I would consider that a casual game. That is awesome. Yeah. It's, and yeah. I mean, I'm know, not saying nothing, all casual games are bad. There's nothing like that on the uh, on the Android. Here's so what good, I'm worried about. Good for you, Google. So, so here, there was a rumor of a uh, Sony Ericsson hybrid phone that rang on Android 3.0 that would be a gaming device with a controller and everything like that. So it would be a phone and like a PSP and one kind of a thing. I don't know. See, what I'm worried about Wasn't is... Wasn't that the Nokia N-Gage? Didn't exactly. they try that? Well, yeah, no kid now, but see, Google's buying up this social media platform. They're buying up these gaming companies. Microsoft's going to be coming out with Windows Phone 7. They're going to have Xbox Live integrated into Ooh. it. I think casual, cool. I, think, I think these big games are all going to go, I think we're going to have one or two a year tops, and everything else is going to be casual games from here on out. I, I, I think it's going to be huge. I think, I think, I think mainstream big no. gaming, is, I think it's almost dead. That's impossible. I know, dude. No, I think it's impossible. You can't sell 14 million copies of Call of Duty and expect a casual game to knock that out. That'll yeah. that'll be that'll be like the kind of thing that's still around that 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 overbaked McDonald's gaming. That's what we'll have left. That's my that's my I think we're going to have that crap and I think the other big stuff is going to die because they can they can they can turn out these Android, iPhone, Windows Mobile Phone 7. I mean, look at the look at the iPhone marketplace. It's huge how many games are in there. They're all those casual games. Look at Facebook and Farmville and, and Farkle and all that stuff. It's all casual games, and they're, they're so many times bigger than the games that uh, the big serious games. Well, that's just appealing to the masses. I mean, that's, that's just getting the knuckleheads. You know, there's still people out there that appreciate a good game. Yeah, I mean, look at, look at all the money pumped into E3 this year. There's definitely still a market there. But then at I the same time, E3 was going for that casual shit with the Kinect. I think it's going to be a massive casualization of gaming across the board. It's going to be inspired by all of this, all these smaller games. I think there's still going to be the big games. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying all big games are gone, but it's, I'm worried that those big games that are left are going to be the franchises that are just going to be remanufactured. I don't know. I'm really worried about the direction things are going right now. But the other time with the casual games, they may sell like you know millions more or whatever, but they're also being sold for fractions of the price. Like most of these games are like a buck or two. Yeah, but whereas but like because the their games, development costs are so low, they're raking in the money. Yeah, if they if they make that breakout hit, yeah, you know like uh, Pop Cap, they're famous for that. But that's all they do. And they've created that formula for the for those games. A lot so of people that are I doing think that. I think you're going to see a lot of studios come up, or a lot of people go into studios. John Carmack with uh, ID, he's doing the Rage thing, and right. he's all about the phones, but he's still making Rage for the big consoles too. Right. So I don't think it's going to take away from that. You're just going to see a lot of the smaller companies that are already focused on that. Like just, you said too, it's not you know it's not expensive, so it's going to be easy for these rich ass companies like Rockstar. I don't think they'll do it. I hope not. If but, they do, I'd be excited to see what it was, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, I would, I mean, there's always the room for a really good casual game. I mean, I'm not saying all casual games are bad. I've been known to play some Plants vs. Zombies, so you know. Yeah. But I'm worried that the kind of games we grew up with, I just, I, and the kind of games that we even have now, I don't know. Tetris I, was really casual. Yeah, but it mm. it was intense. <laughs> there's, yeah. I don't know. I'd be curious to see what the audience out there thinks. Maybe I'm off my rocker, but you guys let us know in the comments, or you can head over to jupitercolony.com. There's a section in there just for Lotso. And of course, Lotso is live every other Friday night. That's kind of hard to keep track of, though, so just go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar, and you'll see when Lotso's live. You can join us in the chat room like the guys behind us right now are. Okay, guys. Well, that's everything we got for you in this episode of Legend of the Stoned Owl, but we'll be back in two weeks. Legend of the Stone Dial is produced over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. That's where you can find the show, subscribe, all those good things, leave us feedback, and 
also, where you'll find us every two weeks. Thanks for listening to this episode. We'll see you in a fortnight. We do video games. This is Lotso. Come on, guys. Where's the hell you're singing? Come on. Boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom. Lotso. Boom, 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 boom. Lotso. Boom, boom. Oh. Well, that made my fucking eyes go blurry.